Welcome and good evening and this is Diplomatic Passport. I am Robert Mkundiwa. Today is an absolutely special day. Now following on the massive talk we had yesterday with arts enthusiast, promoter and curator Plod Mako, where we had a wide ranging discussion including on how artists can innovate in this time of not having live shows. This is something that we now have brought you and it's something that we mentioned ye yesterday. Alec Macheso is going to be live here in our studi studios tonight performing live in the first high profile virtual show in our nation's history of the nature we were discussing yesterday. Now of course others have done that in smaller shows here and there but Michael M Macheso here is for example Michael Jackson and they are Tito Jackson. This is it. This is the big one. Baba Shero live on stage today. Now I'll be giving you more information on that show but first a word from our sponsors. The world is under attack. No place is safe from COVID-19. Not even our beloved Zimbabwe. To complement government efforts in the fight against this pandemic, NASA, which falls under the Ministry of Public Service, Labor and Social Welfare, has availed two facilities for utilization in combating the deadly virus. The Baybridge Hotel will be used as a transit isolation center for returning residents from South Africa. Travelers will be required to quarantine for the designated 21 days at the center in our bid to monitor and contain the virus from spreading further. Ekusileni Treatment Center joins the virus treatment centers set up nationwide for patients undergoing treatment for COVID-19. NASA has taken a step further by providing our pensioners with a once-off bonus equivalent to a month's pay. And we have also taken it upon ourselves to fix the ventilator at the Mutari General Hospital to kickstart treatment and help save lives. The fight against COVID-19 is our fight. Help keep Zimbabwe safe. Help save lives. NASA, ours is a lifelong promise. Now today ends a tumultuous week where we are following up the so-called UK 65, who turned out to be just 24 and not from the UK as had been said, as well as a whole lot of other news and debate raising topics, not least of all the condoms in quarantine debate. Now some thought it was demeaning to those in quarantine and all but they are far from reason. In fact, going forward, I would like to advocate that authorities go a step further. They have to make sure that even sanitary wear, menstrual cups, tampons, menstrual pads are also distributed free to those in quarantine. We owe them that dignity and yes, condoms are a must as well. Do not forget that some in quarantine may be couples who have, will have been quarantined together and they may not be necessarily planning on having children but certainly cannot resist the urge to be sexual in their relationships. Now thinking condoms in quarantine is a demeaning or small issue is myopic at best and that ZTN has raised it is a sign of our respect for sexual and reproductive health and rights as our other programming apart from news blitz uh, shows including Heartbeat, our very own health show. Now on to today's show and this is what tonight's show promises you. Lockdown Love. Now of course that's the headline man and he's going to be on live on stage here but just to give you a sneak peek of what's going to be happening here just over here we we're going to be having uh, this this drum set here that's speaking to the beauty this is going to be lit this is going to be on fire and this is where that man Baba Shero is going to be making sure that from wherever you are you're going to be seeing him and enjoying that live music so don't go to bed tonight because if you missed your hero live on stage you have a chance to see him live tonight. And if you've never seen him for some weird reason and not known what it is like having him in action, then certainly you'll have to see what you've been missing. Now onto the diaspora now. We look, take a look at uh, from one view on what our northern neighbor Zambia is doing with regards lockdown or do they even have a lockdown? Actually Zambia 
it's not on lockdown like you guys in Zimbabwe uh, people in South Africa Botswana Zambia it's almost business as usual uh, people uh, are going to their day-to-day -day routines uh, people are going to their works um, private and public sector is open vendors as usual they are going to their day-to-day -day routines um, but of course the, there are some parameters which this, the government of Zambia put in place to ensure the, uh, the safety of its citizens like for instance uh, all schools are closed even way way earlier before Zimbabwe closed its schools and all borders are closed all airports are closed except one airport that is Kenneth Kaunda International Airport uh, in the capital Lusaka well, there you have it. Our northern neighbors are not in anywhere near the sort of lockdown that we have. Ours is very stringent. They seem to be going about their usual business, but hopefully they're also containing uh, this disease. Because if you uh, m remember well, of course you weren't there, but if you're well read, you know that almost a hundred years exactly uh, back in the day, there was the so-called uh, Spanish flu, uh, and indeed they had quite a bit of a problem with it. And certain areas were quarantined, but those that uh, uh, released their lockdown, as it were, earlier, are the ones that suffered the most. So we've got a lesson that we have to learn from history going forward, because lockdowns always work, lockdowns always seem to con uh, at least confine disease and this is something we've been talking about uh, throughout here on Diplomatic Passport. Uh, I see quite a number of you coming on board here. Uh, Takuzwa Jezerai, Reginald Chapfunga, Rungano Gwanzura Tongai, Joseph Tafana, Desmond Kumbuka. Thank you uh, for uh, joining us here on Diplomatic Passport and I hope you guys are going to be waiting through so that you also see live here on our stage, live in this biggest virtual uh, gig that we're going to have. Baba Shero, um, that's uh, the man, Alec Macheso. And of course, he's going to be having other people supporting. So this is going to be a very beautiful, beautiful show. But I want to tell you, as always, as we always do here at ZTN, we've made sure that our, our area has, has been well contained. It's, of course, been disinfected and each and every person who's going to come and take to the stage here will have a unique mic to themselves. We're not sharing material. We've got a lot of other things to make sure that our artists are safe uh, so that they can entertain you in your homes while they're also safe here in our studios. Now, we were talking yesterday of the need uh, for tourism to strengthen its spine in the midst of the COVID crisis. Now, earlier on, I sat down with the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority's Head of Corporate Affairs, Chief Godfrey Cotti, to unpack the challenges that the industry was facing and the possible solutions that they can prefer. Chief Godfrey Cotti, welcome to the show. Now, first, how has the tourism industry uh, fared after taking a knocking from the COVID-19 and what is the state of the industry in general? I would like to thank you for giving us an opportunity to, to be on your show. Um, First of all, tourism is one of the most affected uh, industries. It's tourism and aviation. Um, we're going to take a total knock of about 50 billion uh, US dollars so far uh, in terms of cancellations, in terms of uh, activity that has been brought to a halt, uh, if we quantify it from a financial term. Uh, there's also reports from the UNWTO that we are going to take about 50 million uh, jobs out of um, existence uh, within the sector. Of course, every nation is going to try and make sure that they arrest that. And coming down to Zimbabwe, um, we had had a, a very, um, you know, sublime 11% uh, in the negative uh, by the end of 2019. Um, so we we're really on course to try and regain that. But unfortunately, this is going to uh, go even further because right now there is uh, zero uh, activity as far as tourism is concerned. 
largely because we are you know adopting uh, the stay at home mantra which is going to save us all from this uh, horrid disease uh, COVID-19 so there hasn't been a lot of activity and the impact thereafter is obviously going to be very uh, deep and, and, and felt even further than the 11% that we, we, we lost last year. In terms of uh, the receipts or let me say the contribution to uh, the fiscus, we had uh, contributed uh, a very uh, healthy 1.2 billion at the end of 2019 into uh, the sector but right now we are anticipating uh, a further uh, maybe 50 to 60 percent decline uh, of that particular uh, contribution. So it's something that's going to be very difficult for us to come out of. Um, but that's just very briefly, that is the impact that we have. And then obviously tourism is a, is a line industry that has a lot of other uh, subsectors contributing to it. Uh, and there are, so be, because of that, there, there are going to be even further impacts that we will have to also uh, monitor from uh, various quarters within uh, the tourism sector and industry in its, in its totality. Now there's a delicate balancing act between hotels helping in COVID-19 and the response and the stigma that may linger on around after certain brands, of course, when the virus is gone, is there not? There's a huge one, um, but at the moment we're in a crisis mode. We are going to do everything we can to assist as a sector. Uh, and I speak this very confidently with the players because we've engaged them to say, are there any other places that we can use as quarantine centers or are we going to use for frontline staff and things like that. So very soon you will see uh, the tourism sector coming to the fore to say, this is how we're helping. But in terms of the stigma coming and, and lingering around, it is always going to be here. It is going to stay, it is going to stick, and it's not only uh, you know, peculiar to Zimbabwe only, it's, it's world over. But what we are going to try to do as Zimbabwe is to make sure that we limit that particular damage because perception is everything in tourism. So we have to manage by all means possible uh, and make sure that we, we stay within a reasonable window uh, where stigma is concerned. There is a lot of disinfection programs that are going to be uh, put in place which are going to be mandatory for any other uh, player within the sector that if you're going to reopen there has to be things that are put in place for us to make sure that we make the guest as comfortable as possible. Now as the authority what central role are you playing in dealing with this crisis? Our, our, our role as the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority is largely to, to coordinate, to facilitate so you'll find that there's a lot of activity that has already happened in terms of uh, making sure that we combat uh, the, the spread of, of, the, of the virus. Um, you, you go to Bulawayo, we have uh, hotels that have, hotel groups uh, and players and some players within the tourism line that have gone on to assist within the Exilene project to make sure that uh, Thorn Grove is up and running in terms of linen. Uh, they've given quite a bit. And this is our role as ZTA, to coordinate those efforts uh, and bring them forth together. And of course, as the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority, we're also out there uh, helping in terms of uh, creating awareness because this is our job uh, to create awareness. So we're also helping uh, the, 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 the ministerial task force uh, that is ably led by the Vice President, uh, Honorable Mohadi, to make sure that you know, the message is sent home, it's delivered to the masses on how serious this thing is and how deadly it is. Now, finally, perhaps, after COVID-19, what advice do you have for industry players going forward that tourism may rise again? So we, we are hard at work as we speak, uh, Rob. Uh, I'm sure before the interview I was in the office to say we're working. <laughs> so the idea there is to make sure that we come up with a very vibrant uh, recovery strategy. But if you ask me for advice from a personal perspective, what I really think is going to be key going forward because the, there's going to be a new normal. And the new normal demands that uh, we, we employ innovative ways of marketing our products even during uh, this crisis right now. How are we being perceived as a country? 
there's, there's going to be obviously some, some sort of grading that is going to happen with the powerhouses of uh, the international community to say which country handled it better, which uh, destination was, was managing the, the, the COVID crisis better than the other, and then Zimbabwe is going to be within the play. So we're trying to manage how the country is communicating its, its COVID situation, which is why I said we're in the awareness role to make sure that whatever is being sent out to the world is positive enough to entice people to come back. So from a player's perspective, the digital uh, frontier is, is the new way of doing things. Uh, there are virtual tours that are already happening within uh, the sector at the moment. So we're going to see more of that coming to the fore. So I think it's something that uh, if you're a tourism player, you might want to uh, relook at, re-strategize around and invest in. Godfrey Cotty, thank you for joining us. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. So that was me earlier on with uh, the ZTA Zimbabwe Tourism Authority's uh, uh, Head of Corporate Affairs, Chief Godfrey Kotti. Of course, we had promised you that this, before the end of this week, would give you an update on the state, of course, of our tourism industry, which is an important industry. And we've been very successful this week, have we not? Because we did both the arts and tourism and as i say today we've got alec macheso coming here to entertain us uh, and i hope you're going to be watching all the way until midnight when that show eventually ends and for those who really have been going to alec macheso's shows you know that midnight is actually when the show begins when the heat begins but on this or in this instance we're only getting up to 12 midnight so we hope you're going to join us for, uh, for that uh, and on that note we stamp our diplomatic passport because guess what there's a lot that needs to be done here to make sure a lot more equipment comes here so that you guys get to enjoy that show tonight and of course I'll be enjoying that show tonight as well am I a Macheso supporter do I love Macheso of course <laughs> Of course, I'm not exactly the best with that voice. You'll have to wait until, of course, uh, around 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock as we start that countdown towards the big show. And then you'll hear the greatest voice from Tsungura ever to emerge from this country. We shall be uh, airborne again here on my diplomatic passport on ZTN next Monday. Uh, and until then, keep your comments coming and let us know what you, we can do to get you the answers from the authorities that you demand. I'm Robin Kudiwa. Stay safe. Good night. God bless. And let's wait for Baba Vashiro. <laughs>